things have really changed since we've last had you on the show. Um, let's let's roll it back a little bit to maybe October 26, 2021. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau shuffling his cabinet. You are moved from Minister of Procurement to Minister of Defense. I am actually very curious, how is a move like that brought to your attention? I met with the Prime Minister five days before the swearing in and he asked me to serve as Minister of National Defense in the cabinet for the upcoming session. And I, of course, said, yes, I would be honored to do so. And I had been hearing possible rumors just in the press that I might be in that seat. And so I had at that time begun to establish a to-do list of items that I wanted to accomplish. And of course, uh, ensuring that culture change in the Canadian Armed Forces occurs is one of my top priorities and was on that list. And in particular, ensuring that all members of the Canadian Armed Forces feel safe, protected and respected every single day when they are putting on their uniform to stand up for our country, to protect our country uh, is top of mind for me at this time in this ministry. Yeah, obviously it's a very um, intense position that you were thrown into. And I mean, you were procurement minister, making sure everyone got their COVID vaccines to then move to the Minister of Defense. I would say perhaps the most controversial cabinet role possible in the shuffle. I kind of want to look at the, the human side of that with you, though. Do you look at this as a compliment to your skills working in tough situations? Or did you kind of feel like, oh, come on, not again? <laughs> um, well, I just look at it in terms of being honored to serve in the federal cabinet uh, and as a member of parliament for Oakville, obviously, which has been a very, very uh, exceptional role in terms of having the residents of Oakville put their faith in me. Um, but I will just say that the work in every portfolio is difficult. Uh, there are, as you can imagine, a number of issues facing our country, not only with regard to COVID-19, but uh, domestically and internationally. And so I very much enjoy working with my cabinet colleagues across government. Many of these files intersect with each other, and we have a very collaborative team uh, that is, as you know, uh, gender diverse. Uh, over 50 or 50% 50 of our cabinet is uh, female. And I, as the first uh, visible minority um, woman cabinet minister uh, in national defense, am really happy that we have that diversity at the table. Uh, you know, with these new national responsibilities, I mean, Google your name this morning and Ukraine continues to pop up beside your name due to the conflict that's going on over there. But, you know, we're doing Halton news here and you are a representative from Oakville. So I'm curious, you know, how do you combine those two worlds thinking outside of Canada and then also staying connected to your local community? Well, my constituency office on Robinson Street plays an integral role in ensuring that I'm connected with the community. Uh, some of the accomplishments that we have been tracking, for example, is the completion of the improvements to Trafalgar Road. That was a two year long infrastructure project that began in December 2019 with approximately $6.9 million of federal funding through the Canada Community Building Fund. Uh, so that's one very important project that the federal government has been able to deliver here in Oakville. We also announced an investment of $8.5 million for four innovative businesses across Southern Ontario recently, including $1.4 million for Formark Manufacturing Inc. located right here in Oakville. And then finally, we have announced uh, $118.2 million uh, to support Canadians with housing needs. We know that housing is an issue here in Halton and across the country, and we as a federal government are very much on top of this file. Mm -hmm.